Welcome aboard. So I was asked by a VFR pilot who's preparing to take his instrument training, what can I do to prepare for my instrument training? So I thought long and hard about this. And in this flight, I'm gonna give you my top three things that you can do to prepare for your instrument training. Good morning, Standard Clarence Baron 3175 Whiskey with Kilo. I'd like to pick up my IFR to Winter Gordon. Baron 3175 Whiskey, Executive Clarence, cleared the Punta Gorda Airport via Fort Lauderdale 6 departure, Thunder Transition, direct Winco, direct, maintain 2000, expect 6000, 1 zero minutes after departure, departure frequency is 119.7, squawk 4545. And 3175 Whiskey, clear to Punta Gorda, Fort Lauderdale 6, Thunder, direct Winco, direct. Uh, 2000, expect 6000, one zero minutes, 119.7, one, one, and 4545 four, five in the box for 75 Whiskey. Number 75 Whiskey, three back, correct? Have a safe flight. Contact ground, see you. Over to ground, have a good day. And tower, we're still waiting for release for 75 Whiskey. November 75 Whiskey, affirmative. Looks like there's an IFR inbound to Pompano, um, and that's the uh, possibility that's the delay. All right, well, because I can go ahead and just cancel and just go uh, VFR if, if this is going to continue. November 75 Whiskey, Roger, stand by. November 75 Whiskey, turn left northwest, runway 9 are clear for takeoff. Left northwest, clear for takeoff, 75 Whiskey. Departure 560 Alpha, is in your tower, Roger. It's the green. Fuel flow. Airspeed alive. Eighty-four. How's it rate? You're up. Okay, new three zero two Mooney on the three mile final one thousand twelve hundred report and say. Right, we look at Pull out a ticket tower to come out five five ILS Niner. Come 55 Executive Tower Mooney 3 mile final. Runway Niner, clear to land Mooney indicating 110 over the ground. Come on 55, uh, clear to land, uh, and we're now. 2 miles, 500 feet above. Good morning, Miami departure, Baron 3175 Whiskey. Fire Whiskey, Mike. Uh, 75 Whiskey is about 10 to the northwest from Port Lauderdale, exactly like to pick up my IFR. November uh, 3175 Whiskey, squawk 4545. 4545, 7518. 7518, Whiskey, you're ready to contact and uh, fly heading F270 uh, and maintain VFR below 5000. 270 and heading, remain uh, VFR below 5000, 7518. Whiskey, cutting approach now 126105. 2605, 7518. Whiskey. And Miami departure, Baron 3175 Whiskey is with you on a 270 heading. Baron 3175 Whiskey, my way to part to clear to Port uh, Punta Gorda via radar vector Thunder Tango Hotel, November Delta Romeo, direct destination, maintain 6000, and the Lauderdale International Tour 3004. So, as I mentioned earlier in the uh, video, uh, I was asked by a VFR pilot, what can I do to prepare for my IFR training, my instrument? Ticket. And so as I said, I, I thought about this and I pondered it and uh, thought long and hard and I came up with my top three. So before I give my top three, let me explain why some of the other ones um, aren't on my list. So some of the things I hear is, oh, well, if you're going to go for your training, you should read ahead on, on your books and your training. And that's true. That, that's great. But that's not preparing for your training. That sort of falls under training. Down to 4,000, if I was. So that, uh, that. Yeah, Miami, good afternoon, 900 Richard Gulf. Kind of comes out of the mix. 8,300, climbing 10,000. So the other thing I hear is, well, you should go up with a friend and you should fly under the hood, get, get your instrument band going. And that's good. Um, and definitely useful. But that too kind of falls under training. Not preparing you for your training. That's training. You need to do lots of that in your in your training. 
The other thing I've heard is, uh, well, you should uh, look at your maps and your charts and study them and get to know them. And again, great, great advice. But you can do a lot of that when you're training. And the question wasn't, what can I do during my training? The question was, what can I do to prepare myself for training? So that leads me to my number three of my top three. Sure. And number three you is um, clear Let's see. communication. Yeah, it still clips the eastern edge of it, but you're mostly clear. By communication, I mean radio communication. How good are you on the radios? Okay, How comfortable are you on the radios? The, uh, Every time you fly uh, IFR, you're going to be talking to tower, departure, center, approach. You're going to be going to be getting vectors. You're going to be getting clearances. This flight's a good example. I had to talk to tower. I had to talk to clearance on the ground, get my clearance. Um, because there was a delay in getting me out, I went ahead and decided to depart VFR. I departed VFR, and I had to pick up my clearance in the air. Lots of communication. Were you able to follow along with that? If you're having a little trouble following along with that, then uh, you probably need to work on your radio communication. Um, I was very fortunate and unfortunate that when I did all my primary training, I did my training under class Bravo airspace. So I, I was always talking to somebody. So I know some parts of the country and the world, you can fly in and out of uncontrolled air, airports and never talk to anybody. So my advice to you is um, if you're not comfortable, then get comfortable. Um, start flying into busier airspace. Start um, getting flight following, and not just flight following in the middle of nowhere, flight following in busier airspace. Get used to hearing lots of communication and get comfortable with talking to people. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. Um, you know, when I first started flying, there was uh, magazine articles, and, uh, but uh, there was no internet back then, and it was everything was on reading magazines. And I remember reading articles talking about um, people who, who were uncomfortable flying in busy airspace, and I never understood how that could be, because that's all I've ever flown in, until I started flying IFR and leaving busy areas, and then I realized there are parts of the country where you never hear the radio. So, um, if you have trouble, not just my video, um, previous videos of mine, or anybody's video, if you're not following along, my first bit of advice would be just that. Start um, start following start practicing. Um, start doing start doing more uh, flight following and, uh, and flying to busier airspace and get used to that. Which leads me to my number two thing you can do to prepare for your instrument training. And number two is um, how's your navigation? Are you able to track um, VORs? Are you able to navigate? Do you always know where you are? Do you have your situational awareness? Because I promise you, in, when you're doing instrument training and when you have your instrument ticket, it doesn't get easier when you're in the clouds. So if when you're VFR, you're having a hard time um, tracking a VOR and keeping that needle centered VFR, I promise you it's going to get much harder when you're under the hood or you're in the clouds flying IFR. So my first bit of advice um, to improve your navigation would be just that. Um, also, are you flying with a GPS? Um, how well do you know that GPS? Have you sat there? Have you used the GPS? Do you under understand how the direct two function works and how that it can give you a heading direct, but that heading direct's only accurate at the moment you, you push it. If you push direct, wait five minutes, and then turn to that heading, you're not flying to your airport or to your, your waypoint, I should say. So um, how comfortable are you with, with that GPS? Do you know it inside and out? During your training, during IFR flight is not the time to try to become familiar with it, try to become comfortable with it. It's not the time to learn it. So get better at it. Um, same thing with, uh, you can't fly instrument approaches, but what you can do when you're coming into an airport, load an ILS approach on there. Now, you can't fly the ILS, but if you're direct coming coming in uh, direct into that runway on a long final, see what the needles are showing you when you're looking out the window 
See how when you're just off to the left a little bit, off to the right a little bit, what that needle deflection looks like and how it changes. So when you're in the clouds and you're in the soup and you see the needle deflection, you understand what it really means. Because in training, they're going to tell you, you're going to learn what one dot deflection means and based on how far you are, how far off the center line you are. But what does that mean? Like when you're in the air, what does that really mean? What does it really look like? So advice is, is as you're coming in, part of improving your navigation is go ahead and load, load that up and look at the needles and see what it looks like when you're one, yeah, one uh, dot off, two dots off, gonna three be, dots off. Gonna be Even full deflection, see right how that varies and see how you can be right now, really on a VFR so somewhat still lined up and, and be three right dots off and you're just right kind of off axis depending on how far out you are. Um, uh, it's a good visual cue to, to, to learn and to know and to, to know and be able to visualize as you're coming in. Uh, I think it'll make uh, when you start flying instrument approaches, I think it'll make that a lot easier when you see that deflection so you don't the uh, one dot off, two dots off, and all of a sudden try to overcorrect. Because most of us, when we do our training, we see that we're a dot or two off, and we put in way too much correction when we're in the beginning, not realizing that, oh man, we're barely off. Like, how much correction do you put in when you're VFR coming into land? So, um, this is something you can do, it's not training, and if you can do as a VFR pilot, I'm saying get under the hood, normal VFR, load it in, just see what it all looks like, get that feel. Um, and that kind of leads into my my top thing you can do um, to prepare for your IFR training, and that's fly better. When I say fly better, your VFR, you're as easy as it gets at, that, at this point of flying. So when you're flying VFR, how well are you holding your, your altitude? Are you holding within 100 feet? Because again, just like with the navigation, if you can't hold your altitude within 100 feet when you're BFR, I assure you when you have no visual reference and you're disoriented, you've got a hood on or you're in the clouds and all you have your gauges, uh, it's going to be much harder. You can't hold 100 feet BFR, you're not holding it when you're IFR. So, um, get more precise on your flying. Um, hold those approaches, hold those headings, get really good at doing that when you're VFR. Um, that will go a long, long way. When you're, when you're departing an airport VFR, and you climb at a constant speed, because when you're in IFR, one of the things you're going to want to do is climb at a constant speed. You're not going to want your airspeed to be constantly changing, because that means your, your attitude is constantly changing, and, and that's not what you want in IFR. You don't want... 26.8, good day, 7 5 Whiskey. Let's turn directly. So, get better at that. Um, also, when you're coming in to land, do you, do you know your power settings? When you're flying, do you know your power settings? You, can you fly by numbers? Can you set your power? You come in to land, can you... Do you know the numbers that you're going to set your power and your prop if you're, if you're complex, or just your power settings? to establish the the approach you're looking for, uh, the approach speeds and and the, uh, the descent rate you're looking for. Can you just set it and make the airplane do it? Or are you kind of hunting for it to, to find it? Um, if you don't know the numbers, if you can't fly by the numbers, then learn them. Learn them for your airplane. Know them for every airplane you fly. Uh, this airplane, when I come in to land, I bring the power back to 1800, um, the 18 inches manifold pressure, and that 18 inches at 2300 RPM will slow me down um, to the 120 knots that I'm looking for. Um, then based on that, when I drop my gear, I know that I put my gear, that's going to put me at the blue line, at my, my 100 knot um, approach speed that I'm looking for. Uh, so get to know what those settings are. Um, do that while you're VFR, because I promise you, when you're flying IFR, that will make your life much easier. That will improve your training and, and make you a, a better pilot. So um, these are just some of the things you can do. So basically, if you notice, uh, my top three things are aviate, navigate, communicate. Three things I think you've heard somewhere before in your training. And, and it really applies. It, it applies in everyday flying. Uh, not just when things go wrong, but in the things you can do to prepare yourself to go for your instrument ticket and to just be a better pilot. So, um, I hope this helps. I, I hope this was informative. Um, for those of you looking to get your instrument ticket, 
Uh, I promise you, if you follow those those three those three things while you're getting ready to do your training, uh, it will make your training much easier. And it's advice that uh, I could have used myself uh, when I went from VFR to VFR. So I hope those uh, pointers and tips, my top three, make sense. And uh, if you have a different set of top three, I'd love to hear it. Go ahead and put it down in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please, by all means, hit that thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already, a subscribe button is uh, the greatest compliment I could ever receive. And uh, I'd be more than happy to, to talk about and discuss um, other ideas people have. And, and I'm always open to discussion and hearing things and learning things. And, you know, it was one of those questions that I hadn't really pondered until it came up. And uh, I stand by my answers, but I'd love to hear yours. So. Again, hope you enjoyed the flight, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you enjoyed all my videos, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.